Tetralogy of Fallot is the topic for this video. And what is tetralogy? Well, tetralogy refers to four things that happen in the heart. And these are the four things. Well, first I'll read them out. Pulmonic stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding aorta, ventricular septal defect. And there's a mnemonic here, uh, prove. Now, this may seem a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to draw a diagram and hopefully try to explain this as clearly as possible. So here we go. Okay, now let's draw this diagram and try to explain all this. Okay, so we got our heart here with the four chambers. And uh, let's label this as the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. This is the right atrium. This is the left atrium. Now, blood comes back to the heart via the veins. And there's usually a little opening there. has to get in, right? And these veins are usually the superior vena cava and an inferior vena cava. And then eventually there's a valve here. And blood flows through that valve. You can kind of show it being open there. And then eventually blood comes down to this valve and flows out through the, what is this, pulmonary artery. And then that pulmonary artery takes blood to the lung and then eventually brings it back to the left atrium. And this is a very, very basic diagram to illustrate the flow. And then a couple more valves here. You got one here. And then finally you have the aortic valve here that takes blood into the aorta. And this, this uh, aorta eventually goes to the body. All right. So let's talk about this. Okay, I'm going to use the color, well, let's use the color pink to describe this part. Okay, so blood comes back to the heart from the body via the veins. And when it comes back, it's deoxygenated blood. Okay, that's why I used pink. Deoxygenated blood, meaning the blood doesn't have oxygen anymore. Uh, the blood has delivered all the oxygen to the body, all the tissues, all the cells. Now it's come back to the heart. The blood flows through the right atrium, eventually goes through this valve into the right ventricle. Okay, and then it goes into the pulmonary artery, this deoxygenated blood. And then it gets to the lung. Now when it gets to the lung, the red blood cells inside the blood pick up oxygen. And if you remember, inside each red blood cell, uh, this is a red blood cell, you have these hemoglobin molecules, you remember? And those hemoglobin molecules are the ones that bind to the oxygen. And then all of a sudden now, you've got a situation where now the blood is oxygenated. So the oxygenated blood flows all the way back to the left atrium through the through this atrium here, eventually through this valve into the left ventricle. And then this left ventricle pumps out this oxygenated blood into the aorta. And the aorta pumps the blood with the oxygen to the rest of the body. The blood goes through the entire body, delivers the oxygen to all the cells and the tissues, and then the blood comes right back to the right atrium via the veins. So that's a very basic circulation. Now, we have a presentation about Tetralogy of Fallot. So what happens? Do these four things all of a sudden, you know, when these four things all happen at the same time by some miracle, we call it Tetralogy of Fallot. Is it four separate problems that are occurring at the same time through chance? And the answer is no. Tetralogy of Fallot is really just one problem. One problem that causes these four things. What is that one problem? I'll try my best here to not confuse this diagram. So I'll use the color brown. All right, here we go. This is the one problem. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of highlight this. 
what is this that I'm highlighting in brown? Well, I'll write it on the side here. That brown is the ventricular septum. That septum is what is the main issue here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to try my best. Let me just erase some of this here because I'm going to need to make this very clear to have you guys understand it all. Watch what happens. This septum deviates. So I'm going to probably need to delete a little bit more. Okay. Septum moves to the right. Now watch. It's right here now. Do you see? It's, it's moved. So because it's moved, I'm going to actually erase it. That is the main problem. That one move going right causes this entire tetralogy of fallout. Well, let's talk about it. What's happened? Well, immediately, do you notice there's a gap there? This gap? This gap is basically this gap that I'm drawing arrows through. That is the ventricular septum defect right here ventricular septal defect VSD okay we're gonna need some abbreviations here because I don't have enough space so this gap is the VSD ventricular septal defect there's a defect in the ventricular septum alright that's easy to understand watch what's happened here do you see this area here do you see how it's narrowed it was nice and wide and healthy but now this pulmonic valve area is stenotic it's narrowed and that is pulmonary stenosis okay that's the second part which is right up here the first thing uh, circle that we got two more things well eventually the fact that this is narrowed here causes the right ventricle to work harder because it has to pump blood into a narrower space so it causes the muscle of the right ventricle to hypertrophy. Okay, it's just a basic compensatory mechanism. Whenever a muscle has to work harder, it increases. Uh, it, it becomes hypertrophied. You know, it becomes a, a bigger a bigger muscle. And the reason the right ventricle has to work harder is because this it has to work harder to pump blood out into this pulmonary artery because the space is narrowed now so you develop right ventricular hypertrophy the right ventricle becomes hypertrophied and that's this part right here RVH right ventricular hypertrophy I'll draw a little arrow to that muscle there and then finally the last part to explain is this part referring to the aorta notice what's happening here blood is now going from the right ventricle to the left ventricle into the aorta. Look at that. And I'm happy I used different colors here because that explains where the pink is representing the deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood and the red is uh, representing the oxygenated blood that you know is healthy and, and needed to be pumped out into the body. And this aorta is now I'll make this really obvious here to kind of, uh, you know, illustrate this fact. Uh, let's draw it like that. Look at that. I've made it really obvious because I want you to see what's happened. The aorta is now, it's getting blood from the right ventricle. So it's getting blood from the right ventricle and left ventricle, and that's where the term overriding aorta comes from. Okay? So I really hope I've, I've explained that as clearly as possible. You can always watch this video again. You can draw this out yourself. That is Tetralogy of Fallot. Really, remember, it's just one problem. This problem right here where that ventricular septum deviated to the right. Okay? All right, now that we have drawn this beautiful diagram, well, not that beautiful, but it's okay. Now we can get into the symptoms and all that stuff. All right, um, can I can I keep this diagram? I'd like to keep it. Yeah, I think I can keep it. All right. 
So now let's get into the symptoms and all that stuff. So what happens when a child has tetralogy of Fallot? What, how, do, how do you know? Well, first of all, what you're talking about is babies. You're not talking about kids that are 10 years old. You're talking about babies. Uh, basic symptoms are dyspnea, difficulty breathing. The child will have, probably have poor weight gain. But remember, and I'm glad I kept this diagram, is you really have to look at the pathophysiology. What's happening? Look at the fact, look at the aorta here. The aorta normally pumped out healthy oxygenated blood to the body, correct? Well, in Tetralogy of Fallot, look, it's pumping out blood that is a mixture of deoxygen, deoxygenated and oxygenated. So the blood that the aorta pumps out to the body is actually has less oxygen because of all this deoxygenated blood. So as a result, the babies are cyanotic. They don't have, their bodies just don't have enough oxygen because that blood that the aorta is pumping out is a mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. It's not 100% deoxygenated blood. Uh, it's a mixture. And as a result, they can get these spells called tet spells, teat spells, whatever way you want to pronounce it. These spells are basically spells of uh, cyanosis, um, hypoxemic spells, you know. Uh, and these spells are triggered when the child cries or when the child is being fed. Because during those uh, situations, um, the child can actually develop a situation in which they become hypercyanotic. And that really is uh, characterized uh, by the TET spells. Um, it's really, really scary for the patient, uh, well, actually for the parent. I don't know, the patient is just a baby. Um, cyanosis, you know, uh, it, it's it's really to really you don't have to memorize this you just have to sort of understand what's happening with this uh, aorta that's pumping out this mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood alright so how do you diagnose it when a baby has these types of uh, symptoms well there's three standard tests okay and I'm gonna write them up here you gotta have a chest x-ray you have an EKG and you have an echocardiogram and I'm going to show you what each of these tests will show. I just want to mention a little bit about the physical exam. This pulmonic stenosis is going to cause a very characteristic physical exam finding. And that physical exam finding, and I want you to remember this, it's a harsh systolic ejection murmur. Okay? Now that that's very important, uh, and it's at the upper left sternal border. Upper left sternal border. I wouldn't mention it unless it was important. Upper left sternal border. Okay, remember that. Harsh systolic ejection murmur. Physical exam. You put the stethoscope on the heart. That's what you hear. All right, let's get back to uh, the diagnosis. So the chest x-ray is going to show a pulmonary artery that is a different shape. It's going to be concave. okay? And the chest x-ray is also going to show diminished uh, pulmonary vasculature, dif diminished pulmonary vascular markings. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's easy to understand that the pulmonary artery is going to be a different shape um, uh, because of this uh, stenosis. Uh, but the diminished pulmonary vascular markings, what that is referring to is the fact that there's less blood flow coming through here. And the vascular markings will be diminished. That's essentially what, it, what you can see on a chest x-ray is uh, these vascular markings. And if there's less, less blood flow, these vascular markings will be diminished. Now EKG, EKG is very important because in the EKG you can actually pick up on the right ventricular hypertrophy. Remember that's that's this part right here. The EKG will show you that. Okay, echocardiogram is really the gold standard. I mean that's really what shows you everything. That's how you that will essentially show you the tetralogy of Fallot, TOF tetralogy of Fallot. That that's going to show you everything. But 
And before you do the, the echocardiogram, these tests can also be helpful. Well, finally, the treatment. Well, the treatment of Tetralogy of Fallot really is surgical. This right here, the ventricular septal defect, you have to close that with a patch. And if you close that, it can help solve the problem. And you also need to resect this area here that I'm going to erase. You have to resect that, and that allows that pulmonic stenosis to be relieved um, and opens up uh, that nice, healthy, patent uh, valve area. And that, as a result, you have much more space for blood to flow through. It's a surgical treatment, of course. Now finally I'd like to finish off with some clinical vignettes and hopefully these will um, kind of show you what kind of questions you'll have on a licensing exam. Alright, here we go. Four month old girl is brought to the office by her mother who states that the girl had an episode following feeding during which she began to breathe deeply, became blue and then lost consciousness. The mother states that she picked her up and held her and the infant regained her usual color and became alert. Physical exam reveals a harsh systolic murmur. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, it helps when you've just watched the presentation. This, uh, what are they describing here? The child's being fed and turns blue. That's the tet spell, teat spell. Okay. Finally, one last clinical vignette. Three-month-old infant is evaluated by a pediatric cardiologist. The infant was noted at birth to have an upper upper left sternal border ejection murmur. Remember, the infant at the time was not cyanotic but slowly developed cyanosis over the next two months. At the time of the pediatric cardiologist's exam, the EKG or ECG showed right axis deviation and right ventricular hypertrophy. Chest x-ray film showed a small heart with a concave main pulmonary artery and diminished pulmonary blood flow. Those are those diminished pulmonary um, markings, uh, diminished pulmonary vascular markings that I was talking about. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well again, tetralogy fallot.